Well, hello there again. It's Q and welcome to Hold and Modified, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And today we are going to talk about a fun little product that some of you have or have seen. Uh, it's definitely shown up um, as one of the more common accelerators for the 1200, especially back in the day, the GVP 1230. 6830 accelerator and it goes right into the bottom of this 1200 and it's at this point in the video i would flip it over but uh you know i don't i don't flip things over anymore the computer will rule the world all right it's at this point normally i would flip it over and pop off that bottom trap door to take out the existing accelerator if there's one in there, or of course, if there is none to put one in there. But I don't do that because I work on this so much. I just, well, I go into convertible mode, but I did want to mention that the trap door I do use is this amazing, amazing 3D printed trap door from Chris Edwards. Now he did send this to me a while ago. I'm sorry, Chris, it's been, it's been a long time for me to have a, a time to show this, but it's a gorgeous, sturdy product and of course it, it allows you to have the trap door with ventilation um, and, and and there's this cool boing ball in here uh, i don't i don't think he designed it but he did print it he did download it and get it printed for me using his amazing printer and his his advanced 3d printer skills so thank you so much normally yes you'd pop one of these off for me what we're going to do here and again i apologize for the handheld look but uh i just go into convertible mode so i don't ever put my screws in my amigas and I just go ahead and pop this off and I'm gonna flip it up out of the way. So let me do that and get it to that stage, which is gonna require two hands and I'll put the uh, phone down and we'll get right back to this. I promise you won't miss much of anything. All right, and as I promised, you didn't miss much of anything. Uh, as you can see, there's nothing in here. I've got the, well, <laughs> there's nothing in here. There is the 3.2 ROMs, there is my compact flash hard drive and there is my, um, Scan Plus AGA, which is in there. However, uh, this is a stock uh, 6820 as far as any, everything else goes. And what I wanted to uh, show you was the difference in speed you get. Now I have done videos like this before. You might be thinking, well, you just, why are you doing this video again? This is a little different. This is a little more focused. I had a lot of people uh, message me. Um, they wanted a little more exact um, comparison between the two. So, on this channel, if you're a subscriber or, re or, or or someone who watches often, you know that I cover a lot of 3D creativity stuff in here. It's not really a games channel. Uh, I do cover and review, you know, various hardware and, and, and software and stuff, but mostly I do 3D uh, creative rendering and animation using Lightwave. So one of the things I can tell people is if you're if you're really going to want to do 3D animation and rendering on your Mega and get into the whole retro pixel art thing. Uh, you absolutely need some kind of RAM expansion and floating point unit. You do not want to run a 1200 without an FPU and RAM expansion unit. So let me show you what the, the cheapest version of that is. Now, again, I know I've shown this before, but there's a lot of new viewers out there, a lot of new subscribers. Thank you, by the way. We're almost to 1,000. That's amazing. Um, but so I want to show you what the cheapest, simplest option is that, that will allow you to have fun uh, you know, pixel art, 3D animation creation fun without breaking your wallet because you probably already broke your wallet getting a 1200 in the first place. So let's, let me show you that. Okay, so here it is. This is the, the cheapest, simplest thing you can get. It is a floating point unit and it's up to eight megabytes of RAM. And you can set it down as low as, I think, four megs. I think I have it set to five megs right now. And it also has a slot for a uh, battery backup clock. And you can get these on Amy Kit or eBay, super cheap. When I use the term super cheap, that's a relative term. $75, $85 uh, US for this. And it just plugs down, down here and it completely wakes up your Amiga because now it gives your Amiga 60 to 20 access to fast memory. And then the 3D applications get access to that floating point unit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create for you, this is kind of a, a twofer video, you're gonna get a video me comparing and showing um, basically the minimal type Amiga 1200 system for creating 3D art on and using the amazing GVP 1230 accelerator that you can probably find on eBay 
ooh, anywhere between $300 and $500. But using that as a scale of CPU power, there are aftermarket modern solutions, of course, um, that will give you the same improvement or even much faster improvement. But I wanted to stick in this particular video, I wanted to show you kind of more conventional Amiga accelerators. I mean, this, yeah, this is a fancier, newer produced thing, but it uses a real Motorola 68882. I never get that right. It uses a real Motorola FPU and it uses conventional RAM and the crystal. So there's nothing fancy or there's no shenanigans. There's no, you know, crazy FPGA or Pi hidden, hidden in here. It's just a standard. Uh, you would have gotten this from, um, I think Microbotics back in the day made an FPU RAM expansion card. Um, that's what this is. And so we're going to put that in first. We're going to create a little quick benchmark scene that even the slowest Amigas can render. So you're not waiting two weeks for a result. And then we'll go ahead and put in the GVP 1230, which is sitting patiently over here. So let's get this sucker booted up. I'm going to have to install that card in here. All right. So here we are. Again, I'm filming off screen. So sorry about that. I think you've gotten used to that by now. What I'm going to do real quick. And if you don't, if you don't care about how you want to do, if you don't care about creating something in Lightwave. No. Of course, you can just skip past, fast forward through this. But for those that want another little mini Lightwave tutorial, that's what we're about to do here. So I'm going to go into Modeler. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a box. And we're going to keep this pretty, pretty simple. Look at that. There's a box. We're going to subdivide it once. Press Q to give it a name. We're going to call it ground. Isn't that exciting? Ground. And then we will go ahead and let's turn off the box tool. We will save as, and of course it's going to whine and moan because I have not done my assignments yet on this. Shame on me. All right. So let's go ahead and save it into objects and we'll just call it uh, checkerboard ground. Actually, that's a really, really long name. That's kind of silly. So we'll just call it Cheeker Grund. <laughs> okay. I did not add the .lwo to that. That's not catastrophic, but uh, I should be. You should be aware of that. So let's go to new and let's do a ball, an exciting ball here. Um, okay. Drag out the ball. Make it round as best as you can here for this. I know it's hard to know if it's truly round because we're on this you know, display. And that's it. I'm not going to make the ball any smoother. Um, I'm not going to try and make it uh, any, yeah, any more polygons because I want to make sure that this, any Amiga can handle, right? I don't, if I can, yeah, sure, I can make a really super high resolution ball that's got super smooth polygons and looks amazing. But that's going to really take a long time. Like right here, you can even see this 1200. Remember, we're on an Amiga 1200 right now. And the only thing it has is an 8 meg RAM expansion and a floating point Motorola unit in it, in addition to its 6820 uh, Motorola. So you're seeing firsthand the type of redraw speed you can get, the type of experience you can get. So look at that. So you're seeing in real time what it's like to uh, work on a system with these specs. This is the most basic uh, system you can, well, frankly, you could have for 3D for this era of Amiga. So now that we've done that, we can hit quit. And now I will press F9 and all of you can go um, have some tea and biscuits or some Jack Daniels and hot dogs if you're over here in the States. I'll see you on the other side. I did want to call out this phase of the rendering process, by the way. So we're on two of five. So this is the anti-aliasing or the, the process where Lightwave will smooth all the jagged pixels as best it can based on a value you give it. Uh, we've given it five passes and then we give it a threshold for edge detection or pixel detection. And what it does, instead of going through and like rendering the entire thing again to try and smooth it out, which is the enhanced version of their anti-aliasing. This is the regular version of their anti-aliasing. And that's why sometimes when you've watched my lightweight videos, you'll see this white stuff show up and it doesn't show up in all the videos I make. Like why do sometimes I see this white stuff, but other times I don't see the white stuff. The white stuff is when you use the normal anti-aliasing mode, not the enhanced mode. Enhanced mode always renders the entire screen, all the pixels again, but based on a threshold mask. This mode is just going to render 
only the pixels that it finds based on the threshold value you gave it. So it does this like edge detection. What, what it's doing is it's highlighting for you. It's giving you visual feedback. Here are the pixels based on the number you told me that I'm detecting that I need to smooth up to five times. And that's what this is doing. So as you see the white, the white stuff going away, like over here right now, that's because now it's rendering it again. Um, and but just those areas where it was white and it's going to do this up to five times and then you'll have a completed image. So that's what you, why sometimes you see this white stuff happening and other times you don't see it happening because there's two anti-aliasing modes in Lightwave. Okay, so we're about to get to the end of this. It's been going for quite a while. It's going to go ahead and integrate those pixels one last time and we're going to see the final beautiful chrome ball on a checkerboard ground here. Again, very impressive for the time. We are seeing full ray traced reflections here. This is in ray traced shadows, something I know NVIDIA and AMD love to talk about in their video games nowadays, doing it in real time at up to you know 144 frames a second at 4K. <laughs> but so yeah, you can see the subtle reflections down here on the floor too from that. So this is this is a good, um, very simple ray trace render benchmark scene that won't take, you know, like I said, days or weeks to render on base Amigas so that you can actually get a result and know that you're actually hitting the CPU and FPU pretty hard. So now, the moment we've all been waiting for, how long did that actually take? 13 minutes, almost on the dot. 13 minutes and one second. So write that down, 13 minutes, one second. That's not, that's not terrible. Now, yeah, the resolution we rendered at is terrible, 160 by 120. Uh, that's below most uh, <laughs> most even Amiga games, right? So, but now using math, you can figure out how long things will take. So if we double this resolution, you got to take that render time of, let's just say it's 13 minutes, take that render time of 13 minutes and multiply it by a factor of four. Now you're going to say, well, wait a minute, you've just doubled the resolution. Why do we multiply it by four? Because remember, you're rendering twice the amount of pixels up the screen, twice the amount of pixels across the screen. And that's how you can get your formula for how long something is going to take. So you don't have to sit around for an hour to figure out if it's gonna take an hour. You can render it at this super low resolution mode, well, we actually rendered it this, super low resolution mode, and know that at 160 by 120, it took 13 minutes. So that's how you can figure out your render formulas. Now, what we're gonna do is sh shut all this down and we're gonna put in that GVP 1230 accelerator and see what kind of performance boost it gives us. Let's do it. Okay, here we are. This is the GVP 1230. And as you can see, it has the 32 megabytes of fast memory on it. It has its Motorola 68030 processor and its Motorola floating point unit. So it's ready to rock and roll. Well, some of it's kind of tucked under there. Then it has its custom ROM over here. Now, GVP did use proprietary SIM modules, so you couldn't use standard, you know, widely available Windows PC style SIM modules. GVP did that because they had market dominance and wanted to make sure you had to use their memory and they made more money off of it. They charged more for those memory modules. So that's a proprietary pin count on these, kind of a bummer back then, but when you're on top, you can do what you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and put this GVP accelerator in there. It's really nice. And honestly, when you look at the modern ones that are coming out today, right? like the uh, 1230s and whatnot, they don't look terribly different. So just, yeah, just remember, this stuff is not really that foreign. You know, the old stuff versus the new stuff. It's pretty familiar. Let's go ahead and get this in there. All right, we've now got that GVP in here. And as you can see, we do have 32 megs of RAM. So that's, uh, that's pretty sweet. We'll go ahead and fire up Lightwave. Okay, so here we are in Lightwave. And already, you can see it's slightly faster. Not a lot faster, but the interface does move a little quicker with that 68030 in there. Now remember, our target time is 13 minutes. That's what it took. The base 3D rendering configuration 1200. Let's see what it does with this 68030 GVP. Okay, now the GVP 68030 is about ready to show us the finished frame. Here we go. Integration goes pretty quickly there. And the displaying of the image, well, that is definitely faster. So you do get some benefits there, even just for displaying the final image. Of course, the image won't look any different than the prior one. It's just about the speed of render. So here we are. We had 13 minutes to beat. And what did we get? Five minutes, six seconds. 
Well, just like the 13 minutes in one second, we'll just call it five minutes. So 13 minutes on the 68020 with an FPU, 68030, 13 minutes versus five minutes. And time is money, money is time, however you wanna call it. As you can see, that is a really good investment. You are gonna shave oodles of time off of your creation time with that. 13 minutes of frame is not terrible, but five minutes of frame is a heck of a lot better. <laughs> so it is definitely a good investment. If you can find one on eBay or on the various Amiga forums or channels or Facebook for a decent price and you wanna keep things, you know, OG to put in big ass finger quotes, um, yeah, I would get it if you wanna do any kind of 3D pixel art. Don't, definitely do not use a 1200 without an FPU and fast for me. Do not do it if you're gonna try and create pixel art with 3D software, it's just, it's it's unusably slow. But you saw the difference. I mean, you can definitely use it with a with just the FPU and memory expansion, but even a 68030 goes, it just does wonders for you. And of course, yes, there are other options. There's the, if you wanna keep it again, to finger quote big time here, more OG, there is the wonderful and amazing TF1260, which uses a real, 68060 Motorola processor. I did it again, Motorola, Motorola processor. A Motorola processor. This is fun, this is a great card, I've shown it before, and obviously it'd be even faster than this. But that's not what this video is about. <laughs> this video is about the GVP 1230 and why if you can find one, or I should, to be fair, if you can find an equivalent 68030 accelerator for your 1200 and you're interested in doing 3D retro art, absolutely get one. You could be getting the GVP one, you could be getting the uh, CSI 12 gauge, the Microbotics one, you could be getting the, the newer TF 1230 one, although I don't know if that comes with an FPU, and remember, you absolutely need the FPU to do 3D work. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the gist of this video. We're all kind of a little loony spending money and time on this when if I rotated the camera 180 degrees, we would see a modern PC system with, you know, obviously bazillion times faster processing power, but this is the fun stuff. This is the stuff we love. Thank you for watching.